Hello and welcome. Welcome to another video. Um, today I'm really excited for what I'm going to be bringing you. This is actually like I've been really interested for a long time now and I was really excited when I was doing the research and I'm really happy to be talking about it and I'm really happy to be bringing it to you guys. So today we're going to be looking at the origins of the Queen of Hearts, um, where it comes from, how it developed into popular culture and how it is today, um, and where it kind of leaves us now. So if you like all things weird, wonderful and magical, grab a drink, turn out the lights, it's going to get interesting. So probably the most sort of well-known Queen of Hearts we're going to be starting to look at originally kind of comes from the playing cards, so a deck of playing cards that have the four suits. Now, the first known playing cards appeared in the 9th century. This was during the reign of the Tang Dynasty. They were originally used on wood blocks before later on they would be transferred onto thin pieces of card. It was actually in the Parisian and the Arabian uh, depiction of these cards later on in history that we first started getting the first concepts that we now know today of the four dynasties within the playing cards and then the rest of the numbers. After being introduced to Europe, they would eventually be depicting more relevant dynasties and royalties to the countries within Europe. Now, different countries had different versions of the playing cards and different dynasties and royalties depicted within the actual cards themselves. We have the French royalties, the Germanic royalties, the English royalties, and the Spanish and the Portuguese. During the early 1300s, the English would introduce the concept of the knave, which would eventually become known as the child or the prince, and later on be known as the jack. The Queen's appearance would actually appear within the deck around the time of 1377, and the Joker was, in, was only introduced much, much later by the Americans. The most famous suits that we now use today and most commonly recognised was actually introduced by the French and their depiction of it, and even though the name has changed, the original names were the hearts, the tiles, the clovers, and the pikes. These, of course, would then be later transferred by name into the heart, the diamonds, the club, and the spade. So, let's get into meeting who the royals were and who they were depicting. So starting with the hearts and the royal family of the hearts, you have Charles VII, Judith, and Lahaya. Diamonds was Julius Caesar, Rachel, and Hector. Clubs was Alexander the Great, Arjean, and Judas Maccabus, or later known as Lancelot. And the spades was David, Pallas, and Ogia the Day. So let's look at the queens and see who they are. Judith is a biblical figure, she's the Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Diamonds is Rachel, who is also a biblical figure. Uh, the Queen the Queen of Clubs um, was Pallas, and she that was another name for the goddess Athena. And the Queen of Spades was Argene, which is actually an anagram for Regina, which basically is Latin for Queen. So let's introduce ourselves to the Queen of Hearts and who she was. As I say, this is um, the biblical figure Judith. So, who is Judith? So Judith was actually a figure that was used in text by the Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox Christian um, Old Testament. However, it wasn't actually used within the Jewish text. Judith herself was actually a widow that was actually upset with her fellow Jewish countrymen. The reason she was upset was they were showing a, a lack of faith and trust within their God, and they felt very condemned and abandoned to a very worse fate. To show them that they should have faith, she, and she would infiltrate the enemies camp lines um, with the promise of information against the Jews which she eventually gained and then she eventually decapitated the head of the leader which then made the enemies disperse and she was went back and was seen as a hero and a saviour to her fellow men. Later on, a nursery would be written during the 18th century by an anonymous author about each of the suits. There were four poems in total, and each one depicting a different quality of the different suits. The King of Spades is said to be flirtatious and doing very uh, questionable things with the maids, which upsets the Queen and ends up the Queen banishing the maids. The King of Clubs and his wife are said to forever be arguing um, and be very upset and be in a very unhappy marriage. The Diamond King is supposed to have one of the best relationships of all, however the knave, as it was known then, uh, was trying to seduce the queen, but the king retaliated um, and ended up banishing him. And then the Queen of Hearts, which is probably the most well known and the most famous one, she bakes some tarts all on a son's day, only to be stolen by the knave, the king calls for the knave, he punishes him, and the tarts are returned to the queen. 
Now these would be the most really most well known stories and depictions of the Queen of Hearts until Lewis Carroll's um, story of Alice and her adventures in Wonderland. Now this is where we start getting a lot of confusion as well because you have the Queen of Hearts in Alice in Wonderland but you also have the Red Queen in Alice Through the Looking Glass. For many years there have been confusion between the two though they are actually two very different people. The Queen of Hearts is very much based on the Queen of Hearts from the playing deck of, of cards, um, whereas the Red Queen is actually based on the game Chess. In order to kind of stop some of the confusion, Lewis Carroll went on to actually quote himself, I picture to myself the heart of queens as a sort of embodiment of ungovernable passion, a blind and aimless fury. The Red Queen I pictured as a fury, but of another type. Her passion must be cold and calm, she must be formal and strict, yet not unkindly. Pedantic to the te degree, the concentrated essence of all governess. But they are different, very different characters. The Queen of Hearts is very um, temperamental, she is very sporadic, she, she has no control over her temper, whereas the Red Queen, though yes, she does have a temper, um, is very calculated and very calm about it, and is and each one uh, it gives a different threat to Alice. Now Alice is first introduced to the Queen of Hearts when she sees some playing cards painting some roses red. As soon as the Queen of Hearts approaches, the cards they fall to the ground and she asks Alice which cards they are as they now have her back to her and she doesn't know. Alice then responds that she doesn't know which cards they are, which infuriates the Queen and then she then summons for Alice's head to be decapitated. It is only when the King of Hearts steps in and reminds her that Alice is only a child that the Queen does subside. Interesting enough that the original Queen of Hearts in the playing decks is originally a depiction of Judith from the biblical sense. Lewis Carroll's Queen of Hearts is said to be based on Queen Victoria in England. Queen Victoria is a very interesting subject anyway, but briefly she was known to be a tyrant towards her own children, to have a very temperamental um, temper, and she could lash out at any moment. There's actually a moment within history where Queen Victoria's mother visits her, and this is when she's had all nine of her children, and she's actually punishing one of them for misbehaving, uh, but she goes a bit too severe, and her own mother says, um, can you not stand um, to hear them cry? How can you be so harsh? And she is apparently said, oh mother, once you've had nine, you stop hearing them, which in itself is quite cold. Now, especially after her husband, Prince Albert, dies, she's been said to be even more erratical and even more temperamental of her temper, which is probably what influenced Lewis Carroll to be inspired by this. There is some rumours that if it wasn't Queen Victoria, it was referring to Queen Margaret of the House of Lancaster during the War of the Roses, because the Red Rose was a symbol of the House of Lancaster. Now, the opponents of the Lancasters was the House of York, whose symbol was the White Rose, and during the story of uh, when Alice sees the, the cards painting the white roses red, it could be a subtle hint or a nod towards the War of the Roses, indicating that perhaps the Red Queen was actually, sorry, the Queen of Hearts was actually um, the Queen Margaret of Lannister. When Alice is introduced to the Red Queen in Through the Looking Glass, uh, she's seen almost immediately as the antagonist of this, as she quickly explains the rules of chess to Alice. She also explains that Alice can become Queen if she starts the game as a pawn and works her way to the 8th square. She then goes on to explain that becoming queen means that she can easily and swiftly move across any squares across the board. Later on, the Red Queen is also seen with the White Queen as they celebrate Alice's progression from being a pawn into a queen, um, only for the celebration to go a little bit awry, and Alice turns on the Red Queen, stating that she is the source of all mischief, and she begins to shake her until she turns into Alice's own cat, which then Alice is then awoke, awakens from the dream. Later on, more confusion would be added to plot, especially more in recent years, along with things like Tim Burton's movie of Alice and Alice through the looking glass as all the different worlds start to collide. Without kind of giving away too many spoilers of it, though it has been up for many years now, um, between the two of them we do see the Queen of Hearts, but we also see elements of the Red Queen within the Queen of Hearts, and we also see that in the second movie through the looking grass, the nod towards the Queen of Hearts and who made the tarts, and all the worlds start to collide, as well as they start introducing the Jabberwock, which is actually not originally from the Alice stories, but would be later incorporated, um, which also adds more confusion to the Alice franchise and the Alice world. So there you have it guys, there's a the progression of the Queen of Hearts and how she became uh, so 
deeply seated within many people's lives and many people's fascination and my own fascination especially with the Alice world and how she ended up there. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this brief look at the Queen of Hearts and history and how she came to be known as she is today. Um, I will later be looking at the story of the Jabberwock and we'll be diving more into the world of Alice in a different video as it is one of my favourite stories and I'm completely obsessed with Alice. Um, if there is anything you'd like me to look at, do let me know. Um, I, will, I will definitely have a look at different things. Um, but if not, uh, do drop a comment uh, and I will see you on the flip side. Bye!